what do you are the possible ways that such kind of mass murder of humans can happen? It's always a wonderful question. So one of the chapters in my new book is about unpredictability. I argue that we cannot predict what a smarter system will do. So you're really not asking me how superintelligence will kill everyone. You're asking me how I would do it. Right. And I think it's not that interesting. I can tell you about the standard, you know, nanotech, synthetic, bio, nuclear. Superintelligence will come up with something completely new, completely super. We may not even recognize that as a possible path to achieve that goal. So there is like an unlimited level of creativity in terms of how humans could be killed. But, you know, we could still investigate possible ways of doing it. Not how to do it, but the at the end, what is the methodology that does it? You know, shutting off the power and then humans start killing each other maybe because the resources are really constrained. That there, and then there's the actual use of weapons like nuclear weapons or developing artificial pathogens, viruses, that kind of stuff. We could still kind of think through that and defend against it, right? There's a ceiling to the creativity of mass murder of humans here, right? The options are limited. They are limited by how imaginative we are. If you are that much smarter, that much more creative, you are capable of thinking across multiple domains, do novel research in physics and biology, you may not be limited by those tools. If squirrels were planning to kill humans, they would have a set of possible ways of doing it, but they would never consider things we can come up. So are you, are you thinking about mass murder and destruction of human civilization? Or are you thinking of with squirrels, you put them in a zoo and they don't really know they're in a zoo? If we just look at the entire set of undesirable trajectories, majority of them are not going to be death. Most of them are going to be just like uh, things like Brave New World, where you know the squirrels are fed dopamine and they're all like doing some kind of fun activity, and the sort of the fire, the soul of humanity is lost because of the drug that's fed to it, or like literally in a zoo, where in a zoo. We're doing our thing. We're like a, playing a game of Sims, and the actual players playing that game are AI systems. Those are all undesirable because sort of the the free will, the fire of human consciousness is dimmed through that process. But it's not killing humans. So, like, are you thinking about that, or is the biggest concern literally the extinctions of humans? I think about a lot of things. So there is X risk, yeah. existential risk, yes. everyone's dead. There is S risk, suffering risks, where everyone wishes they were dead. We have also idea for I risk, Ikigai risks, where we lost our meaning. The systems can be more creative, they can do all the jobs. It's not obvious what you have to contribute to a world where superintelligence exists. Of course, you can have all the variants you mentioned where we are safe, we are kept alive, but we are not in control. We are not deciding anything. We are like animals in a zoo. There is, again, possibilities we can come up with as very smart humans, and then possibilities something a thousand times smarter can come up with for reasons we cannot comprehend. I would love to sort of dig into each of those, X risk, S risk, and I risk. So can, can you like linger on I risk? What is that? So Japanese concept of Ikigai, you find something which allows you to make money, you are good at it, and the society says we need it. So like you have this awesome job, you are a podcaster, gives you a lot of meaning, you have a good life, I assume you're happy. Mm -hmm. That's what we want most people to find, to have. For many intellectuals, it is their occupation which gives them a lot of meaning. I am a researcher, philosopher, scholar. That means something to me. In a world where an artist is not feeling appreciated because his art is just not competitive with what is produced by machines, or a writer or scientist will lose a lot of that. And at the lower level, we're talking about complete technological unemployment. We're not losing 10% of jobs, we're losing all jobs. What do people do with all that free time? What happens then? Everything society is built on is completely modified in one generation. It's not a slow process where we get to kind of figure out how to live that new lifestyle, but it's uh, pretty quick. 
in that world, can't humans do what humans currently do with chess, play each other, have tournaments, even though AI systems are far superior at this time in chess. So we just create artificial games, or for us, they're real, like the Olympics, and we do all kinds of different competitions and have fun, focus, ma maximize the fun, and and uh, let uh, the AI focus on the productivity. It's an option. I have a paper where I try to solve the value alignment problem for multiple agents. Mm -hmm. And the solution to avoid compromise is to give everyone a personal virtual universe. You can do whatever you want in that world. You could be king, you could be slave, you decide what happens. So it's basically a glorified video game where you get to enjoy yourself and someone else takes care of your needs and the substrate alignment is the only thing we need to solve. We don't have to get 8 billion humans to agree on anything. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so what? why is that not a likely outcome? Why can't AI systems create video games for us to lose ourselves in, each, each with an individual video game universe? Some people say that's what happened. We're in a simulation. And we're playing that video game. And now we're creating uh, what? Maybe we're creating artificial threats for ourselves to be scared about because fear is really exciting. It allows us to play the video game more, uh, more vigorously. And some people choose to play on a more difficult level with more constraints. Some say, okay, I'm just gonna enjoy the game, high privilege level, absolutely. So, okay, what was that paper on multi-agent value alignment? Personal the, universes, personal universes. So, so that's one of the possible outcomes. But what, what, what in general is the idea of the paper? So it's looking at multiple agents that are human, AI, like a hybrid system where there's humans and AIs, or is it looking at humans or just so this intelligent is, agents? In order to solve value alignment problem, I'm trying to formalize it a little better. Mm -hmm. Usually we're talking about getting AIs to do what we want, which is not well defined. Are we talking about creator of a system, owner of that AI, humanity as a whole, but we don't agree on much. There is no universally accepted ethics, morals across cultures, religions. People have individually very different preferences politically and such. So even if we somehow managed all the other aspects of it, programming those fuzzy concepts in, getting AI to follow them closely. We don't agree on what to program in. So my solution was, okay, we don't have to compromise on room temperature. You have your universe, I have mine, whatever you want. And if you like me, you can invite me to visit your universe. We don't have to be independent, but the point is you can be. And virtual reality is getting pretty good. It's gonna hit a point where you can't tell the difference. And if you can't tell if it's real or not, well, what's the difference? So basically, give up on value alignment. Create an entire, it's like the, the multiverse theory. It's just create an entire universe for you where your values. You still have to align with that individual. They have to be happy in that simulation. But it's a much easier problem to align with one agent versus 8 billion agents plus animals, aliens. So you convert the multi-agent problem into a single agent problem. I'm trying basically. to do that, yeah. Okay, is there any way to, is there, so, okay, that's giving up on the, on the value alignment problem. Well, is there any way to solve the value alignment problem where there's a bunch of humans, multiple humans, tens of humans, or eight billion humans that have very different set of values? It seems contradictory. I haven't seen anyone explain what it means outside of kind of words which pack a lot, make it good, make it desirable, make it something they don't regret. But how do you specifically formalize those notions? How do you program them in? I haven't seen anyone uh, make progress on that so far. But isn't that the whole optimization journey that we're doing as a human civilization? We're looking at geopolitics. Nations are in a state of anarchy with each other. They start wars, there's conflict, and oftentimes they have a very different views of what is good and, and what is evil. Isn't that what we're trying to figure out? Just together, trying to converge towards that? So we're essentially trying to solve the value alignment problem with humans. Right, but the examples you gave, uh, some of them are, for example, two different religions saying, this is our holy site, and we are not willing to compromise it in any way. If you can make two holy sites in virtual worlds, you solve the problem. But if you only have one, it's not divisible, you're kind of stuck there. But what if we want to be at tension with each other? And that through that tension, 
we understand ourselves and we understand the world. So that that's the intellectual journey we're on, we're on as a human civilization, is we create intellectual and physical conflict and through that figure stuff out. If we go back to that idea of simulation and this is a entertainment kind of giving meaning to us, the question is how much suffering is reasonable for a video game? So yeah, I don't mind, you know, a video game where I get haptic feedback, there is a little bit of shaking, maybe I'm a little scared. I don't want a game where like kids are tortured, literally. That seems unethical, at least by our human standards. Are you suggesting it's possible to remove suffering? if we're looking at human civilization as an optimization problem? So we know there are some humans who, because of a mutation, don't experience physical pain. So at least physical pain can be mutated out, re-engineered out. Suffering in terms of meaning, like you burn the only copy of my book, is a little harder. But even there, you can manipulate your hedonic set point, you can change defaults, you can reset. Problem with that is if you start messing with your reward channel, you start wireheading and uh, end up blissing out uh, a little too much. Well, that's the, that's the question. Would you really want to live in a world where there's no suffering? That's a dark question. But is there some level of suffering that reminds us of what this is all for? I think we need that, but I would change the overall range. So right now it's negative infinity to kind of positive infinity, pain, pleasure axis. I would make it like zero to positive infinity and being unhappy is like, I'm close to zero. Okay, so what what's the S risk? What are the possible things that you're imagining with S risk? So mass suffering of humans. What are we talking about there caused by AGI? So there are many malevolent actors. We can talk about psychopaths, crazies, hackers, doomsday cults. We know from history they tried killing everyone. They tried on purpose to cause maximum amount of damage, terrorism. What if someone malevolent wants on purpose to torture all humans as long as possible? You solve aging, so now you have functional immortality, and you just try to be as creative as you can. Do you think there is actually people in human history that tried to literally maximize human suffering? It's just studying people who have done evil in the world. It seems that they think that they're doing good. And it doesn't seem like they're trying to maximize suffering. They just cause a lot of suffering as a side effect of doing what they think is good. So there are different malevolent agents. Some may be just gaining personal benefit and sacrificing others to that cause. Others, we know for a fact, are trying to kill as many people as possible. When we look at recent school shootings, if they had more capable weapons, they would take out not dozens, but thousands, millions, billions. Well, we don't know that, but that is a terrifying possibility. And we, we don't want to find out. Like if terrorists had act access to nuclear weapons, how far would they go? Is there a limit to what they're willing to do? In your sense, is there some malevolent actors where there's no limit? There is mental, mental diseases where people don't have empathy, don't have this human quality of understanding suffering in others. And then there's also a set of beliefs where you think you're doing good. Uh, by killing a lot of humans. Again, I would like to assume that normal people never think like that. It's always some sort of psychopaths, but yeah. And to you, AGI systems can carry that and uh, be more competent at executing that. They can certainly be more creative. They can understand human biology better, understand our molecular structure, genome. Uh, again, uh, a lot of times uh, torture ends, then in, in, individual dies. That limit can be removed as well. So if we're actually looking at X risk and S risk, as the systems get more and more intelligent, don't you think it's possible to anticipate the ways they can do it and defend against it like we do with the cybersecurity, with the do security systems? Right, uh, we can definitely keep up for a while. I'm saying right. you cannot do it indefinitely. At some point, the cognitive gap is too big. The 
surface you have to defend is infinite, but attackers only need to find one exploit. So to you, eventually, this is, we're heading off a cliff. If we create general superintelligences, I don't see a good outcome long-term for humanity. The only way to win this game is not to play it.